All the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid mark I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Oh Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Oh Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. Oh Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking Oh Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground your testimony today shout aloud amen wherever you're joining us this afternoon in the name of jesus and give a loud shout of praise to the king of kings the lord of lords put your hands together for jesus hey come on put your hands together for jesus hey
let's just take a moment then in that mode of worship just tell that father you are God alone in this season and at such a time you are God alone and I choose to worship you I choose to enthrone you I choose to call you father I choose to give you honor and the praise due to your name take a moment and give him praise wherever you are take a moment and give him glory this afternoon in the name of jesus tell him that father you are god alone you are god alone incomparable unshakable the mighty god i give you praise this afternoon in the name of jesus i give you praise in the name of Jesus, you are the Almighty God. Nothing can move you. Nothing can shake you. Nothing can, can, can cause you to waver. Father, the unwavering God, there is no change. There is no change of mind with you. Father, we worship you. This afternoon we give you praise. This afternoon we are joining. This afternoon we are joining in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Be thou magnified over the nations of the earth. Be thou magnified over situations, over circumstances. Be thou magnified above every crisis. Above every darkness, above every great in the mighty name of Jesus, there is none like Him. You remain the God of Abraham. You remain the God of Isaac. You remain the God of Jacob. And this afternoon we worship Him. We worship Him. We worship Him. Across the nations of the earth, we worship. We give you praise from Nairobi, Kenya. We worship you in the name of Jesus. With thanksgiving, we worship you. With gratitude, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. When Lazarus was dead, Jesus stepped forward and said, Father, I thank you. This afternoon, from Nairobi, Kenya, and across the nations of the earth, we choose as sons of God to step forward and say, Father, we thank you. Because you are a good father. You are the example of fatherhood. And we step forward to say, Father in heaven, we thank you. Gracious, merciful, powerful. You work in wondrous ways. And we thank you this afternoon. We bless your name. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Such a privilege and honor for us to be in God's presence. I know some of us are at our homes, but we are in God's presence. Being in God's presence is a state of mind. You could even be in the most beautiful cathedral but we are not in God's presence but we bless the Lord for such a time as this uh, God has given us the privilege and the grace for us to be in his presence for us to commune with him for us to receive of him because he is the source of life and when we commune with him there is life flowing when we commune with him, there is grace flowing in the name of Jesus. So allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of our father in the faith, and our mommy in the house. Uh,
the set pillars over this commission, Apostle and Pastor Grace Israel Okere, to invite us all to our supernatural service. Wherever you are, feel invited. Keep watching till the end. Keep connected till the end. And I know that the hand of God will reach out to you and bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So just a reminder of one very important announcement. This coming week from Tuesday, we'll be having a life-changing conference. We'll be having a, a life school for us to be imparted with wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. We know you are getting get wisdom, get understanding. Glory be to God. So it will be a, a week of, of us getting wisdom and us getting understanding for us to be wise. The Bible says be, be harmless as doves but be thou as wise the serpent. Glory be to God. The, it will be an uncommon week. We shall be taught on the midlife crisis. The midlife crisis. Crisis that sets in when you are in the mid of your life. After you've consumed half of your bread. Hallelujah. You know, a, a slice, uh, a full loaf of bread has about 14 to 15 slices. So, assuming it has 15 slices, after you've consumed seven and a half, now somebody sits back and said, when did I eat the first slice? And then he looks at the half that is remaining and said, this half, it seems I just ate it the last uh, few mi minutes or so. So midlife crisis affects lots of people. That is why you see parents, after they hit that age, they change. They, they, are, they begin to think and reason and approach life from a very different perspective but with understanding and by the spirit of god we shall be taught on how to maximize that season on how to turn around our fortunes on how to to maximize the remaining half because by the grace of god no matter how old we get we shall leave this earth so there is always a midpoint of our life so from tuesday all the way to sunday every evening from 7 30 p.m please connect please watch please take notes please invite your friends and let them gain wisdom hallelujah it is that wisdom that men rule their lives and i know that it will be a time of tremendous blessing hallelujah so at this point i know that we're ready for god's word wherever we are let us open up our hearts let us Minimize the movement and the distractions in our homes. Don't watch half, run to the kitchen, run to the fridge. Just settle down. Let God speak to you as God's servant steps up to teach, to impact, to instruct, to lead us to pray also. And I know that God will change your life in the name of Jesus. So with Jesus, Joe, let's receive our Father, God's servant. As he brings us God's message, God's word, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for bringing us together again into your presence to hear your word. We ask the God that you speak to us. Minister life to us as we pray, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless everyone that has connected with us from different parts of the world, from their homes. God bless Dockers Chapia Teach for joining us online. God bless Ophon Serekema Akang from Scotland for joining us. God bless Beatrice Ongoods for joining us. God bless Godric Ekirapa. Wow, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. 
Pastor Nora Oduno. Thank you for joining us. Sirami Jabi. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Now, I want you to share the video. If you are online now, share it so that others can join us. Share it 10 times minimum. Share the video, share the video, share it. Oversharing should be worrying you. <laughs> Connect somebody. Create a watch party. Let somebody join you to watch the word of God coming to us. We shall be praying. We shall be praying this afternoon. We thank God for that worship session. It reactivates your spirit and makes the spirit come back alive. You know, as the pandemic began to hit everywhere it affected worship of jehovah but thank god that the worship of jehovah is restored everywhere on earth you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone studio seeing this right you are god alone the way it was tuned during the first service from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone Oh, Pastor Sami Adetukasi, God bless you. Thank you for joining us from Lagos, Nigeria. All right, Pastor Grace, you are welcome to the service this afternoon. Keep sharing it. Keep sharing it. Let somebody know you are around to hear the word of God. Share it on your page, on your platform, so that it can spread. Thank you, Jesus. You are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God alone You are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God alone you are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God alone You are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God alone and right now, in the good time I'm there, you are on your throne, oh God, you are God alone, you are God alone, from before time to God, you are on your throne, forever you are God alone. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Father, we thank you. Speak to us right now. And as we enter into the realm of prayers, hear us. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew chapter number 13 I want to show you forces and spirits that stops qualitative growth spirits that stop qualitative growth that makes your growth not to be quality I will hinge on a specific place then I'll spread out again as we begin to pray and then we'll close up again on that specific place Matthew chapter 13 from verse 1 to 9 and verse 18 to 23 it buttresses the entire point and shows us what stops qualitative growth the bible says from verse 1 the same day when jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitude were gathered together unto him 
so that they went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he speak many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went out to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon stony places where they had no much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no no roots they withered away verse number seven some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruits some an hundred some sixty and some thirty fold who had ears let him hear verse number 18 the bible says hear ye therefore the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart this is he which receives seed by the wayside and he that received the seed into stony places the same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy received it yet had no root in himself but dureth or endureth for a while but when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word by and by he is offended verse number 22 he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becometh unfruitful but he that receiveth seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit bringeth forth some an hundredfold some sixty and some thirty blessed be the reading the hearing and the doing of god's word in the name of jesus christ now from this scripture you see different categories of fruit bearing but i want to peg on verse number 23 and uh, verse number seven no verse number eight i want to peg on verse number eight and verse number 23 let's start from verse eight verse eight says but others fell into good ground not a bad ground very good ground and brought forth fruit but okay, okay and brought forth fruit some and hundred some 60 fold some 30 fold hmm. let's go to verse number 23 but he that receives seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it he understood which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundred fold some 60 some 30 hallelujah praise god from this scripture you discover that the first group those who fell into stony grounds those who fell on the wayside were not fruitful at all they never gave out to any fruit before they could even grow the enemy destroyed them those who fell among thorns those who fell in stony places those who fell on the wayside all of them are the same they are unfruitful then number two are the ones that fell into good ground the ones that fell into bad ground are three categories wayside stony places and thorns the one that fell into good ground are three categories those that gave back to 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold so three 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 they shared it equally now one of the things you need to note is this qualitative growth is when you give when you are fruitful to your maximum i repeat qualitative growth is when your fruitfulness reaches the maximum when you are fruitful up until your maximum now if you check these guys here you will discover that the one that gave back to fruit hundredfold is at its maximum the one that gave back to 60 fold fruitfulness is average while the one that gave back to 30 food is minimum minimum <laughs> minimum i wanted to take note of the fact that they all understood they all understood the one that gave back to 30 60 80 had understanding 
but how come what limited them what held these ones back everyone that God created has ability to give back to 100 fold but many end up giving back to 30 and 60 and they get satisfied it will never be your portion in Jesus name where should you perform 100 fold don't perform 60 some years ago I did sat and twofold when I wanted to go to US to go to school I remember our teacher then looked at me and said you are a very brilliant guy but many things are distracting you don't allow distraction make you always have minimum instead of maximum mark and that's what touched me by the time I finally got to university I was gunning for the best I had all my A's regularly I did not want anything less than the best and God answered me and gave me good results all throughout my stay in the university you need to understand that God gave you grace to perform maximally not minimally stop settling for minimum and giving excuses qualitative growth is when you manifest maximally not when you manifest minimally you are better than what you have done you can do better sir. you can do better than what you have done many times I look at myself and I said to myself I should be better than this if I'm not better than this, something's wrong with me yes and that's why you see me stretch myself to get some and as God the more I stretch myself the better I get the more better the result but the lesser I stretch myself the more mediocre I become don't settle for average 60 is average and don't settle for minimum 30 is your minimum settle for the best settle for qualitative growth quality hundred fold three of them gave back to fruit but one was more quality than the other three of them gave back to fruit one hundred another sixty another thirty but when the three of them stand one will be the elder compared to the others one will be more respected and valued and honored compared to the rest stop settling for average spirits because why waste the nutrient that would have supplied you hundred food and you gave back to 60 why waste it you know some few years ago when we wanted to buy the bus i preached a message then and talked about faith i said the same faith you will use to activate the bankers to lend you or loan you some money is the same faith you will use to activate somebody giving it to you without calling it a loan i, I preached that it's the same faith no there are no two faiths you release the same faith and believe god that it will be given to you and you're not owing anybody you use the same faith to go and meet the uh, bankers the banker can say no i remember when we wanted to that, buy that bus we went to the bank to give us money to buy the bus they told us to bring three years um account of the church then three years account of the pastor three years account of the wife of the pastor three years account of every member of the board three years so they can check whether we are credit worthy or not after that they told us to bring some documents that we don't know what year or what month we'll be able to find them the church auditor then called me and said sir you are the one who preached and said we should be using our faith why don't we use our faith to get this money and buy this bus debt free than for us to start suffering to gather out these documents and they can still say no they can look at one of the board members and say this board member is a poor man we are not giving <laughs> this church so at the end you'll be using faith to push and beg them to borrow you money that we're going to give back to them why don't you use faith to get the money cash and few people supported them and i stood and said fine let's go and i began to pray and god answered that prayer and god gave us money we were able to buy the church bus debt free no debt the same thing happened when we wanted to buy the land we bought this land where we are on debt free we're not owing nobody we collect the paper everything paid for and we stepped out and entered into the land debt free so nobody can harass you and say hey hey why are you entering there <laughs> it's paid for sir paid for completely debt free are you understanding what i'm talking about now this is what god wants to do have maximum not minimum don't use your faith to get 30 fold why are you punishing yourself and you lose 70 fold you only get that that is foolishness of the highest order you lose 70. don't use your faith that can get you 100 for to get 60. who will eat the 40. who did you leave the 40 for devil 
So demons will gather the 40 that you left. Who did you leave the 40 for? You use your faith to gather 30. The 70 you lost, who did you lose it to? Who takes it? I think in my brain, I used to think those things in my brain. If God says some people got 30, some people got 60, some got 100. If I get 30, who now enjoys the 70? Then I'm a fool for allowing the devil to take the 70 that God gave me. No way! I must have the entire 100. Are you getting wisdom now? Pastor Dennis was talking about us getting wisdom. We told our understanding we should get understanding when we were talking about the life, uh, midlife crisis. Now, think it in your mind. God programmed you to get 100 food. You released it to get 100 food. You now finally got 30 food. Who did you leave the 70 for? Remember, 70 is greater than 30. You are a fool. You are eating leftover. When the devil is eating the real food. <laughs> the real food god gave you imagine let's assume god programmed you to have 100 cars let us use cars to to to, to preach it 100 cars you managed to get 30 and probably those 30 are bicycles took took but the remaining 70 are supposed to be good cars and you lost them lost them to who <laughs> and you are riding on tuk tuk and bicycles and you lost the other 70 to who hallelujah praise god who would you lose those 72? Or you manage to get 60? And then who takes over the 40? What if? What if that 40 is the best of your life? What if that 40 is the cream of the la cream of your destiny? Why would you lose the 40? I want you to make up your mind. I am getting 100 food. Everybody watching me or connected to us from any part of the world. Make up your mind for one hundredfold of your blessing everything god says you must have you must have it all no wonder dr miles monroe said he wants to die empty he said he doesn't want to die carrying some of his blessings he wants to die empty he wants to finish everything i read the story of kenneth copeland kenneth copeland is one of the preachers in america he had lived very long he's 80 something years old and he's still very agile and strong he said God, you know, he was asking God for more money to do ministry. And God said, you have finished all the money allotted to you in destiny. Because presently, I think he has given out about 27 aircraft. Kenneth Copeland will look at you and not give you aircraft. That's the level God took him to. He was so blessed. So, God told him, you have finished the money, the wealth allotted to you. You have spent more than 100% of the wealth allotted to you. You have entered 200%. Ah. So, he asked God, so whose blessings am i now using since i finished my own <laughs> since i finished all the one that is allotted to me whose am i using god said i'm giving you the blessing of some christians that never collected theirs those that lost their own those that didn't care about theirs those that didn't pray to get theirs those that didn't fast to get theirs those that collected 30 and left 70 so i'm gathering them and i'm giving you since you know how to manage it for me wonderful kenneth copeland will not use my blessing i'll use my own but fine, it is even good that Kenneth Copeland is using some people's blessing, not even the Antichrist. Because all of us are expecting the world to end now because Corona has made us understand that the world can end any time. Now, who will spend all that you have lost? The 70 food that you lost and you are managing 30. Qualitative growth is when you get everything that God says is yours. Everything that God says is yours. Make up your mind. Whatever God says you must become, you must become it fully. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing taken out of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever God says you must have access to, you must have access to it hundredfold. Stop fearing. Stop fearing men. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, whenever you make a mistake and ask me, what do you want for this ministry? I ask you the ultimate. I don't ask for stupid things. I speak very confidently. If you don't, can, if you don't have it, give the one you have. But now, I need this and I'm bold enough to say it. Say exactly what you need. When you are praying, tell God exactly what you wanted. Some time ago, when a certain governor came and was speaking with me, was speaking with me, and then he said, What do you want me to do for you? I said, No, I don't want anything for myself. I want something for this ministry. He said, So what is it? I said, I want 100 acres of land, straight. 100 food. I read it in my Bible, 100 food. The man looked and said, Yes, 100. Praise God. <laughs> I want 100. And I meant it. He looked at me and said, I looked back at him and said, That's what I want. You asked me, What do I want for this ministry? That's what I want. 100 acres, sir. 100. Because I believe in 100 food. 
if you talk too much i make it a thousand because god said he can increase us to a thousand a thousand food hallelujah <laughs> and the man told me what he can have i said fine i'll be ready for it that that's what you have by the grace of god we'll get the rest but my desire is 100 acres hallelujah praise god so you ask for what you want i remember when we were looking for land we saw some land that was half this land and it was three times the price of this one and i said no way that's not what we want this one cannot even take the tent it can't we move from place to place to sell until we found this place which is 100 by 100 100 food i believe in 100 food this land is 100 by 100 simple oh glory to jesus from henceforth let that 100 be ringing in your spirit the best and nothing but the best not 30 food quality and quantity added together not 30 not 60 don't be shaking now you are somebody giving it i say let me just manage manage what hallelujah praise god some years ago when we just got married i think to be 11 or 12 years ago i and my wife went for honeymoon in ghana we entered the aircraft and we flew to ghana and then in the aircraft they were giving us sweets i think they were giving us two two sweets or something like that so they gave all of us sweets so i licked my sweet and my sweet finished so i called the air hostess and said i need more sweet my wife pinched me and said why don't you humble yourself ah what is wrong with you you, are, you want them to know you are here now why don't you cool down and gather yourself and be organized i said madam i said i need sweet <laughs> i need sweet what's your own she said you are embarrassing me ah uh -uh. dignify yourself you're a man of God. ma i need sweet i need sweet oh jere yeah, I said, good job, he came. Nay, nee, I need sweet. I want to lick this sweet, oh, Jere. The air was said, disappeared. Came back with cup loaded with sweets and gave me. I said, You see, madam? She looked at me and said, Yes, that's the favor I command. Sir. I said, I want to lick sweet. I, I don't lick sweet every day. Let me lick it now. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. You should be able to ask for maximum whenever you're in the presence of God, not minimum ask for the best ask for quality things not a stupid one whenever you are looking for things don't look at the worst ones i say let me manage this they will think i'm humble you are being stupid not being humble sir. get the best and nothing but the best hallelujah praise god somebody say thank you jesus don't settle for average don't settle for minimum ask for maximum the Bible says, all those who understand the word of god get 100 food first then 60 and 30 i am going for 100 food how many of you are going with me 100 food hallelujah praise god now we want to attack things that stop us from having 100 food things that stop us from having 100 food i want us to attack it in prayer i'll be picking them one by one i will do half this afternoon and i'll do the remaining half in the evening so prepare yourself to be in the evening service by 7 30 p.m when we shall be online again to deal with the second half so that you can get the word of god into your spirit all right um uh, pastor dennis you might need to step up now because we'll be praying from now all right the first thing that attacks your qualitative growth the first thing that i saw in this scripture that attacks your qualitative growth is the spirit of the wayside the spirit of the wayside that spirit does not allow you to enter the real house you're always on the wayside you never get to destination wayside spirits that was the spirit that attacked the young prophet when the young prophet finished doing exploits he was on his way home and the spirit of the wayside made him sit on the wayside and the old prophet arrested him and he lost his destiny and ministry the bible says in luke chapter 8 verse number 5 a sower went out to sow luke chapter 8 verse number 5 a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was thrown down and the fowls of the air devoured it when the spirit of the wayside attacks you your blessings will be thrown down men will match your blessings and they will clean their shoe on your blessings the bible says it was thrown down it was thrown down it was matched on the floor and the fowls of the air devoured it the spirit of the wayside is the spirit that makes you not to be able to carry your blessing to destination they bless you but before you go to the destination you have lost it 
is the spirit of abortion and miscarriage of destiny you are not able to carry your blessing to where it is needed that was the spirit that attacked Gehazi. Gehazi was given a rod to go and raise the dead. The rod was loaded with fire and power. He was supposed to take it there, touch the dead body, and the dead body comes back to life. But before he got to destination, it has leaked. The spirit of the wayside took away the thing. He carried an empty rod to the house, laid it on the baby. The baby dried up. That was why Elisha had to pray and pray for many hours before he was able to recharge himself and, re and wake up the baby. The baby dried up. The little anointing that was remaining finished because the rod was dry. Spirit of the wayside collected the anointing from him. Luke chapter number 18, verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass in Luke 18 35, it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Sat by the wayside begging. Spirit of the wayside is spirit of begging. Always begging. You cannot talk with authority. You cannot speak and ask for what belongs to you. You're always begging. I hate begging, sir. I don't know how many of you have worked with me. It's come I don't like it. I remember one day when one uh, guy was trying to harass me and I looked at him and I said, excuse me, sir. I am sending you to go and do that job. I am not begging you. I, said, I stood up. I said, I repeat it again. I'm not. <laughs> and I mean it. Sir. Because you are going to be paid for the job. So why should I beg you? I hate begging. A beggarly spirit. Spirit hanging somewhere, always on the wayside, never in the headquarters, never in the house, never destination. You are going to bind that spirit now. It is the spirit that makes your destiny, your growth, not to be qualitative because it stops you by the wayside and attaches you by the wayside and turns you to a beggar. It makes you leak by the wayside. It makes you not to fulfill destiny. It limits you by the wayside. Wherever you are wanting to fire prayer right now, every spirit of the wayside trying to collect quality from my destiny catch fire now fire the prayer wherever you are every wayside spirit in the name, in the name of, of jesus christ i set you on fire now Every spirit of the wayside, wayside demons, wayside affliction, wayside in jesus name we pray amen number two the second force that fights people and makes them not to have qualitative growth qualitative blessings is the spirit of the foul the foul the foul mark chapter 4 verse number 4 the foul hmm. the bible says and it came to pass as he sowed mark 4 verse 4 it came to pass as he sowed some fell by the wayside and the foul of the air came and devoured them and the foul of the air came when the spirit of the foul comes upon you it will take your seed it doesn't take your harvest your seed in it. if it takes your seed you can never have harvest foul and the bible says in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that god has given us dominion over the foul of the air job chapter 35 verse 11 job 35 11, verse 11, who teacheth us more than the beast of the earth and maketh us wiser than the foul of heaven 
and fowls represent witchcraft. They come to pick up your seed so you never have harvest. You are going to fire prayer right now. Every fowl looking for me, every fowl coming around me to pick up seeds as I begin to pray right now, you are dead. Thank every you. fowl that is always attacking me, every so, fowl attacking my destiny, yes, I yes. command you to be roasted by fire now. Jesus. Set the fowls on fire. Jesus name we pray Amen. Pastor Dennis number three is the spirit of the devourer devourer Matthew chapter 13 verse number 4 Matthew 13 verse number 4 the Bible says and when he sowed some fell by the wayside that's his spirit and the fowls came and the fowls came that's number 2 and devoured them the devourer and ate them up and devoured them see a devourer is something that comes and eats up everything in your life until there is no trace that that blessing ever came into your life that's a devourer I told this guy some, some time ago, I used to have a young man that lived in my house. And I bought him of rice and put it in my house. And I went to the university. Within one week, the guy finished the entire bag of rice. Sir. When, <laughs> when I returned, I was very angry, sir. I asked him, why are you eating the bag of rice with anger? The guy will cook the rice like this. Settle down and eat it with anger. The, his stomach will be full. He will force it in and force it until the teeth. He will go to the toilet and download and come back and continue to eat. <laughs> until the teeth finish. Ah, 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 bah. We were living with one man. When, when I was courting one man, and then some students were living with me, the man cooked food and left. The students sat down and ate it like a devourer. When a devourer said to us, he eats with anger. He eats and leaves no, no traces. He almost eats the pots with the food. That's that devourers. The Bible says to us, and they came and devoured. And they came and devoured. Genesis 37, verse number 20. Genesis 37, verse 20. The Bible says, Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dream. When a devourer attacks you, there is no traces of your existence. Number one. Number two, your dream is over. Devourer eats up your dreams. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 11. The Bible says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. That's what they destroy, fruit of the ground. Neither shall, there shall, shall, shall your vine cast her fruit before time in the field, see the Lord. So they destroy even the fruit that is growing up, the one that are not finished. They just eat it up. That is devourer. You will pray with anger. Every devourer yes, that Lord. wants to eat me up before I manifest Amen. or before I mature yes. in the name of Jesus Christ, I Amen. command you to be rebuked by God. Die now. Die I am the prayer wherever you are. Jesus. I command against every devourer. Look at the for me. Oh, 
Kataga, Oba, Kataga, 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 in jesus name we pray amen number four the fourth thing that we need to deal with that makes maximum become minimum <laughs> Ah, uh, that makes quality to become nothing. The most good is the spirit of the stony places. Stony places. The Bible says in Matthew 13, verse number 5, where we took as our text. Some fell upon stony places when they had not much earth and fought with they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Of course, they dried up. We want to deal with the spirit of stony places. Spirit of stony places, spirit of hard grounds. Hard grounds. Hard ground is when you enter a place, no matter what you do, you will not prosper there. You can't. It's like planting corn on this altar now. It despite the fact that anointing here to dry up. <laughs> hard grounds. Hard places. When you meet people that are very difficult, you preach after preaching. They shake their head and they start committing sin again. That is hard heart. Hard places. Difficult grounds. Difficult arena. Difficult places. You try all your best. Your best is not enough. You pray all the prayer. The prayers will, does not work. And you are wondering what is going on here. It is a stony place. Very hard. Ezekiel 26 verse 36. 26. Ezekiel 36 26 the bible says in ezekiel chapter number 36 verse number 26 a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh hallelujah i want us to pray against hard places in life in the name of jesus the father deliver me from stony hearts amen stony heart stony yes, places Lord. yes Lord. take us away from there yes Lord. from today we operate in heart of flesh areas yes, Lord. areas that are soft areas we that declare are soft. this place very soft for the growth of this yes church. Lord. we declare the area very conducive Amen. for manifestation Amen. of 100 Amen. fold Amen. Not 30, not 60. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Fire the prayer wherever yes, you are. Yes, Lord. I in come against the spirit of, of stony places. I come against the spirit of hard ground. I break you into pieces right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Number Amen. five. 
the fifth place this fifth spirit to attack is the spirit of shallowness the spirit of shallowness you find that in the same matthew chapter 13 verse 5 the bible says and some fell upon stony places where they had not much art so they were planted on a shallow ground there was no much art for them to go deep the bible they fought with they sprung up but because they have no deepness of art they died wow wow because they did not enter deeply that is what happens to many christians when they are not deep they are easily offended and easily angry we need to think we don't drive them away from serving god because they are not deep deep people don't run you run from deep people sir, because they are very deep they will swallow you up very soon it's a matter of time hallelujah praise god the bible says in luke chapter 5 verse number 4 to verse number 6 luke chapter 5 verse number 4 to verse number 6 it says now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought the bible says in verse 5 and simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net verse number six and when they are let down let when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break hallelujah praise god they were fishing before in a shallow ground so it was difficult to catch the fish so jesus said let down your net into the deep because they were in the shallow ground before go to the deep as a deeper part to life when you enter the deeper part to life your ministry becomes easier oh glory to jesus glory to jesus you know one day i was walking around in the compound at night and god said to me do you know that all this thing that is manifesting here is not up to how much you spent at ngara all these things i was looking at the buildings and looking at the heights and said, okay fine decking is coming and this and that one another god said to me do you know all that you are seeing now is not up to what you spent i said wonderful so what happened to me he said you are laboring in shallow grounds eh, one. <laughs> yes and i sat down and said let me calculate it i discovered that rent alone was more than 15 million there at ngara rent alone was more than 15 million i have not spent another 50 million here i said wonderful and i'm seeing what i'm spending i'm seeing it now i can see the blocks i can't you see the blocks but at ngara how many blocks did you see <laughs> hallelujah who is the tallest person in this church <laughs> who is the tallest okay or yaru should be the tallest or is there anybody tall here again uh -huh. so what what is the height of what we saw at ngara we can't see nothing sir. within a few minutes everything was broken down but we can see some things why when you labor in deep places there are results when you labor in shadow ground there are no results in fact there are insults the opposite of result is insults when there are no results in your life there will be insults in your life hallelujah the bible said jesus told them relocate from the shallow grounds to deep places and manifest there you will call out your destiny oh yeah get out of the shallow ground my destiny oh yeah run out of shallow places i bind every spirit of i bind everything of shadowness and i command that we get out of my life in the name of jesus i call my destiny out of jesus. shallow places Amen. enter to deep places the fire the prayer wherever you are in the name of jesus in the name of jesus of shallow places shallow places we call out this ministry in the name of jesus out of shallow places we call out this ministry all of shallow places we call out our destiny out of shallow places we shallow places in the mighty name of Jesus we look to the deep we look at the deep. 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 We 
in jesus name we pray amen sir yes. another thing that attacks men from entering into qualitative growth to maximum is the scorching and drying of spirit <laughs> the scorching and drying of spirit i saw it in my bible I did not know that this Bible it is rich until I sat down to study this my Bible. Sir. The scorching and drying of spirit. This is the spirit that when it comes on you, you'll be drying up. You become smaller and smaller and be drying up. It's scorching. It will be taking moisture away from you. It's taking nutrient. Everything you never it will be taking it away gradually, not in a hurry. By the time they check you after two years, you are finished. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13, verse number 6. You have labored and labored and there's nothing to show for it. It is scorching spirit, scorching your life and drying you up. Matthew 13, verse number 6. You are married like you are not married. They look at you, you don't look married. <laughs> scorching and drying your spirit is dealing with you. You are working like you are not working. After working for many years, they check you up. There's nothing to show you worked. When you tell them you are working in safari coming in a very big company, they look at you and say to fear may i may i never work like this <laughs> because <laughs> not to show that you ever worked matthew 13 verse number six verses, and when the sun sprung up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away they were scorched another word for scorched they dried up and there was nothing to show that they were around anymore and they wither the way shy you will deal with that scorching spirit now <laughs> revelation chapter 16 verse number eight to nine Madete de Bragadusa, Ecologo Bragadusha Gadusa, Mazuka Legadega Bragadusha Gada, Revelation of 16, verse number eight to nine. The Bible says that the fourth angel poured out his veil upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. <laughs> this sun was empowered to scorch men with fire and dry human beings. Oh, let, I want to show you verse number nine. It's very loaded. Verse nine is very dangerous. It says, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over the plagues, and they repented on. When you are scorched, you will insult God. <laughs> I'm telling you. He said that they blasphemed God. Say fat. I don't think there's no God. Say fat. When scorching, thought was scorching about by years, sir. You will not be scorched in Jesus' name. Amen. When the hand of scorching touch you, you, you will forget that it's God. Sir. So whenever you see scorched men, they deny God. Whenever you see a man denying God, you know they've been scorching this one. Uh, the demons are scorching this one. That's why I deny. <laughs> you know, I looked at somebody one day in the play. He said, I don't believe whether there's God. I don't believe in hell. I don't. He said, I don't even believe anything. I am agnostic as a child. I said, Can you see the cloud? He said, I can see it. He said, It just came. I said, Look at this one. Something has happened to your brain. It's very empty. <laughs> Look at it. We were in the clouds in the aircraft. Say, Look at it. He said, I don't believe anything. It's around. It's just there. Ha. Ah. <laughs> I said, You know, somebody must have arranged. He said, oh, I don't believe anything. Anybody arranged anything. Why? They have scorched his brain. <laughs> the mind has been scorched. So it does, it's not empty. When they finish scorching you, everything about you will be empty. You are going to come against the scorching spirit attacking my destiny running after my life to dry me up your time is up time i refuse to up. be dry I refuse every to be dry. scorching spirit attacking every this spirit to spirit. dry us up yes to Lord. dry up our finances yes Lord. dry up our marriages in the you want to dry Jesus. up our destiny you will yes. never succeed you never I command succeed. you to catch fire now in the name of i Jesus. command you to dry up in the name since of you came Jesus. to dry up fire prayer wherever you are on the planet of the earth 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Grace, can you get me some water? Hallelujah. Praise God. The next spirit is the spirit of no roots. No roots. No roots. No roots. There's a reason why I wanted you to do it. Uh, there's a reason. I'll tell you the reason after the service. So do it. No roots. Spirit of no roots. Mark chapter 4, verse number 6. Mark chapter 4, verse number 6. No roots. Sir. <laughs> when you are growing and there's no roots, anything can happen at any time. Ah, may God give all of you roots. Uh, may God give you roots. Amen. Your life will not be rootless. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mark 4, verse 6. Mark chapter 4, verse number 6. The Bible says that when the sun was up, it scorched it, and because it had no root, it withered. See, if the sun scorched it and it had root, it might not have withered. In fact, if the sun scorched it and it had root, it would have flourished. Why? Photosynthesis would have occurred. <laughs> Photosynthesis. Would have happened. Photosynthesis would have occurred. But photosynthesis could not occur because it had no root. It withered. The Bible says it withered away. Withered away. Not just withered, it withered and went away. <laughs> it withered away. Job chapter 18, verse number 16. Job 18, 16 says, His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. <laughs> when you wither away, you don't have branch anymore. Your branches, your everything that decorates your life will be taken off you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want us to come again, the spirit of no roots. My life will have roots. Yes. My roots will be sorted out. Amen. So I have tap root, not just fibrous root. I have enough root to be sucking nutrients. My destiny has roots. I command this spirit to be well rooted. Well rooted. But don't do break it. Every rootlessness you are dead the right now. In the name Fire of the Jesus. prayer. Whatever makes me not to have roots. You are over in my life. You are over. I said you are over in my life. You are over. And in this show. In the name of in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wait, wait. I want to make you understand something. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. For more than five years, we pray that God should give us our own place. Am I correct? For more than five years, we pray that God should help us build the place. Is God helping us? Answer the question. 
There was a time it was looking like God was not answering. It was looking like we are stuck in that. It was looking like nothing was happening. That was when God was making us have roots. Yes, sir. That was when God was making us have roots. <laughs> was it yesterday? I stood here. Two days ago, I stood here. And they told me they needed to pay for something. And I didn't have that money in my... I told him, okay, fine. Tomorrow. Moses, you were around that time. I said, I may, tomorrow. Go ahead. Keep doing what you are doing. I'll pay tomorrow. As soon as I said tomorrow, I entered into the church. Before I came out, my empire rang. The exact money I needed was sent. So I came out and said, hey, hey, come, 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 come. What did you see we were paying for? <laughs> How much was it? There. He was there. So I paid. Bam. We went away. Now, yesterday, by one o'clock, he told me that they have brought the hardcore the things we need to use to sort out that road so that the mods will not be there anymore that they have brought it and then we needed to pay i said all right send the number of the guy to me tell him i'll send money to him by monday he said all right so later by monday as i finished talking to him it was one o'clock as i dropped the phone the money had come in exactly the amount i needed to pay the guy the same yesterday so and he sent me the person's number expecting that i pay him on monday i paid immediately after paying i sent him a confirmation say ah, what happens you forget what happened something just <laughs> whatever is needed by time by time keeps coming are you understanding me it was the prayer spread god answered that prayer then at the right time the answer will start coming that is say we should not be weary in well doing for in due season that's something called due season in due season fire this prayer now because the due season is about to come when the harvest of this will come oh glory to jesus are you still here number eight the eight spirit that makes qualitative growth difficult that makes maximum become minimum that makes hundredfold become thirtyfold is the withering spirit withering spirits that make something that you plant to wither away how many of these have seen it before you planted something it was growing it was growing at one day you got there the thing is not like this <laughs> it does wither the way and you're wondering what happened here it withered the way it is a withering spirit that attacked it many years ago my father used to have some chicken one day we came back home from church or from whatever my father took us to we saw more than half of the chicken all of them were like this within a few minutes they all died they with but what happened they said it is flu flu that caught all of them in one day and they withered away are you hearing me somebody you will fire against the withering spirit spirit that with that businesses with that ideas with that connections with that promotions they are telling they will promote you they will promote you you have already gone for interview government one in fact maybe later we'll talk to you about in fact let's not talk about this anymore you say hey what happened with that is that visited it you will command that with that is me to disappear Amen. are you hearing me somebody yes, the bible says and they with that away luke chapter 8 verse number 6 luke 8 6 the bible says and some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture it withered away matthew chapter 12 verse 10 and verse 13 matthew 12 10 and 13 says and behold there was a man which had his which had his hand withered and they asked him saying is he lawful to heal on the sabbath that they might accuse him verse 13 and he said to the man stretch forth your hand and he stretched forth his hand and it was restored whole like the other when your hand is withered away you can't carry your blessings your blessing will come you see like this you can't hold it because you have a withered hand every spirit that with that hands with that destiny we are out of my life out of my in the life. name of jesus christ in the with name that of spirit jesus. With i don't want spirit. you around my destiny spirit that with that businesses with that finances i order you to live out of my life in the name of Malok jesus every with that is right time up i command you to get out of this church you cannot with us with our spirit in the name of Jesus, all of my life, Raposha, Raposha, 
in jesus name we pray amen number nine the ninth spirit we need to deal with is the spirit of thorns t-h-o-r-n-s thorns thorns Matthew chapter 13 verse number 7 sir. Matthew chapter 13 verse number 7 Matthew 13 verse number 7 very good the Bible says and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them they were blessings it fell it fell into the life of the person that should collect it but it fell in the wrong place it fell among thorns. The, but, and this, the, the blessing did not spring up into the thorns. <laughs> the thorns sprang up very fast and choked it and made sure it did not manifest. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 8. What are the thorns? Thorns. Many people's destiny are full of thorns. Choking you up and down. That no, will not allow your life to be smooth and straight. Mazukalat. Anybody that is manifesting as a thorn in your life is, is in problem. A thorn in the flesh. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 8 says, But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned to what set thorns on fire. I reject every thorn in my life. Yes. I command fire to consume it. Because the Bible says, You are supposed to be burnt. I command every thorn in my life be burnt by fire. By fire. Are you in in my life it's a name of Jesus. Fire. Rapusha, we burn you by fire. We burn you by fire. Rapusha, in the locusts. Get the bucket. 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 In Jesus name we pray Amen He's done so much for me I cannot tell it all If I have 10,000 tongues They still won't be enough when you heal, you heal completely. Chukumarobi mo isi kendule. 
Narikilimu ah. What shall I render Unto Jehovah For he has done so very much for me What shall I render ah. Unto Jehovah For he has done so very much for me Nare 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 Kele Nare Kele Mu Nare 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 Kele Nare Kele Mu Nare 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 Kele Nare Kele Mu Nare Nare Shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Oh, what shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. And every thorn in our flesh is in trouble. Whoever is serving as a thorn in your flesh, whoever is manifesting as a thorn in your flesh is in big trouble. I command them to be arrested right now Amen. and disgraced before destruction. To be disgraced if they don't leave you, no. Anyone serving as a thorn in your flesh, anyone servicing hell around your destiny is in trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord God Almighty sets you free. Amen. The Lord God Almighty gives you a respite. Amen. The Lord God Almighty gives you peace. Amen. The peace that passes on understanding. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise. Thank Wherever Jesus. you are, just lift up your hands, worship him. Adore him because tongues are in trouble. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Praise God. All right. Number 10. The last point for this segment. I'll continue in the evening because there are 10 more. Glory to Jesus. There are 10 more that needs to be dealt with. All right. Number 10 is the choking spirit. The choking spirit. The choking spirit. Matthew chapter 13 verse number 7. Matthew chapter 13 verse number 7. The choking spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit that chokes. It will never allow you to have qualitative growth. Never. It chokes. Matthew 13 verse 7. The Bible says that some fell among thorns. And the tongues sprung up and choked them. <laughs> the tongues could have also grown on the soil and left them alone. These tongues were demonic tongues. As they were growing, they were, they, they, they were affecting the guy. What was not? <laughs> and choked them. Luke chapter 8 verse 33. Luke chapter number 8 verse 33. Choking spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You will soon sing that song on your own. You have done so much for me. Again, you will sing it when you see what God will do for you. Because of the prayers you are praying this afternoon. In the evening, we'll continue and finish it well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke chapter number 8, verse 3 says, Then went the devils out of the man and entered into a swine. And they had ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. So whenever you see somebody being choked, demons have entered Whenever you see a business being choked, a devil has entered. Whenever you see your finances are being choked, demons, is it not when demons entered and entered into the swine? And the swine ran until they were choked. Demon entered. See, demon. Then the devils went out. Not the, the good spirit. Demons went out. You are going to command every demon that have ran into any area of my life, choking it. Oh yeah, out right now. Out. Every devil that ran into the church. 
run into my ministry, run into my destiny, run into my finances, run into my marriage, run into my business. To choke it. Oh yeah, run out. As I speak right now, you are running out by fire. Oh, in by fire. Jesus. Open your mouth. Fire the prayer wherever you are. In any part of the world. It cannot run away. Every source. Choke in my destiny. Choke in my finances. Choke in my marriage. Choke in my life. I command you to back your head. Get out. I will choke my destiny and I let it be so thank you father in jesus name we pray amen go ahead give him praise thank him we give thank you him for answers. Rapposha thank him. You will see the answer. Thank him. You are praying. Father, we you have invested prayer right now. Lord, we you will have the answer. Thank you. We are very grateful. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me so thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Immortal God have led them to pray. And you have already assured me that the prayers are answered. I ask, O oh God, that as they step out, O oh God, of their homes or wherever they are watching me or listening to me from, as they step out right now, let the answer begin to manifest. Let there be a multiplier effect of your fortune and favor that will come upon us to the extent that we shall see that you have clearly answered the prayers in an uncommon way in the mighty name of jesus christ the forces that were against us before we command them to return back to hell and we command the force of the holy ghost to take over right now thank you father as we prepare lord god for the evening service do wonders with us in the evening in the name of jesus christ we decree oh god that the second segment of this meeting in the evening will be uncommon and awesome to the glory of your name thank you father in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah praise god god bless you sir hallelujah i want us to give our offerings right now whatever you are send your offering and pesa pay bill will be projected on the screen if you are outside africa you can use send wave and the phone number there and the thing will come straight to us by the grace of god if you are also you want to use the account number to pay your tithes and your seed go ahead see it on the screen use it wherever you are and start sending your seed immediately don't let anything hold you back you want to send money for us to build the church the way we are building very progressively may god bless you mightily send it now the lord god almighty will bless you in the mighty name of jesus christ so use the send wave app and begin to send your seed right now send your offering from whatever part of the world you are in if you are in kenya use your mpesa pay bill right now Go ahead don't wait don't say i will do it later the devil will take that opportunity that's how it, it, it comes and takes your seed away something will arise that will take it away from you and you wonder what happened do it right now wherever you are send it right now send it right now 
if you're in nigeria in another part of the world and you need account another account Stop, talk to me privately i will get it across to you in the name of jesus go ahead send the seed right now send it right now the lord god almighty will answer you in the name of jesus christ let us pray father we thank you for everyone that is sending their offerings i ask oh god that you put your breath upon the offering right now and let it be accepted by you everyone giving must enter into harvest this week may make this week the week of harvest let this week be the week of harvest of every seed that have been sown so far in the mighty name of jesus christ honor your children in a common way in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen i wanted to share the video with someone and let them pray the same prayer the anointing that helps us here will also affect them positively the same anointing will affect them positively now in the evening we shall be having the second part and the last part of this segment to cap it off very well join us in the evening by 7 30 p.m and the lord god almighty will bless you but from tuesday we shall start the conference live seminar we shall be dealing with we shall be dealing with crisis a mid-life crisis all the things that happen to you when you are in the middle of life and you don't know whether you are still a baby or you are you are already an adult you are confused that confusion will be taken away in the name of jesus christ all those things that happen in between life that makes life look unpalatable that makes life look not sweet we want to handle it this week from tuesday to sunday so prepare yourself and also invite others to join us online wherever wherever they are you know connecting as they connect the lord god almighty will bless them mightily and change their lives because profound truths will be shared in an uncommon dimension and the lord god almighty will alleviate it take away those things that affect people at midlife that make their life not to be sweet the lord god almighty will bless you as you spread the news in the name of jesus christ all right i want us to close now wherever you are i want you to declare yourself blessed this week open your mouth and declare i am blessed this week i am promoted and lifted this week this week shall be my week of honor my week of advancement my week of progress in the name of jesus it is well with me in all ramification of life i make progress this week i am a very progressive person my destiny is a progressive destiny in the mighty name of jesus christ the love of god is shed abroad in my heart the lord god almighty does things well for me in the name of jesus Christ. lines are falling to me in pleasant places i have a good heritage this is an uncommon good week for me everything will work out to my good this week in the name of jesus christ thank you father in jesus name you have prophesied lord i've led them to your presence let it show that they came to your presence the same way it showed in the life of moses that they came to your presence let it show today also to the glory of your name thank you father in jesus name we pray all right the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever amen see you online in the evening see you the lord god almighty bless you in jesus name bye bye